Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of Santa Cruz County Crossroads of Cultures and Commerce. And today we're really lucky because we're joined by Manfred Kripe, who's been a history teacher here in Nogales, Arizona for many years. And today he's joining us to talk about three subjects of Nogales history that he's an expert on. And those three subjects are going to be the sports history of Nogales. The second subject is going to be about the academic history here in the, the county seat of Santa Cruz County. And then also the third and the kind of the fun subject is going to be about butterflies here uh, as well. So Manfred Kripe, welcome to the show. Uh, we're excited to have you. And when I, when I say Nogales, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? The border. The border? What yeah. else? The international aspect. The international aspect. Yeah. And what about the, the sports element here in Nogales? Okay. Uh, my wife and I moved here, I guess it's uh, 46 years ago now. My wife is now deceased. But when we came here, I mean, first of all, by my voice patterns, you'll, you know I'm not from here. However, I grew up in Tucson and originally came from Northern Illinois. However, I am a world traveler, I think you would say. The thing that I first noticed coming here, sports-wise, that it was all American sports. Baseball, basketball, and football. Uh, this was in those days, which was 1977. This was a very... This was a community that was basically run by border patrol, ranchers, miners, businessmen. Uh, it was still very much, in many ways, a little bit of an old western town. That will change drastically by 1988. However, with the sports, uh, if you ever wondered how, I mean, I mean it's, it's kind of funny. You would think soccer, soccer should have been here for years. And it was a little bit with, with, uh, with certain people like Jose Cantor and others who had an interest, but they all went and played across the line. In, uh, I guess it was November 5th, 1977, a group of Nogales High School students came up to me and heard, we heard you, you coached soccer in Nigeria, West Africa. So would you be willing to sponsor a soccer club? And that's how soccer started in Nogales at the high school. Uh, then we, we started out as a club, then we became a team. We were, never, we were never as famous as Sal Point or my compatriot Wolfgang Weber. But uh, we beat them once, and to me that was that was fantastic. Manfred, we've got to rewind a little bit uh, from Nigeria to Nogales. You have to explain that soccer connection there, please. Well, f first of all, uh, when I was a sophomore over at Laverne College in Southern California, I uh, had been sophomore class vice president. I was having the time of my life. I had the role in the, in the uh, play Inherit the Wind, uh, the Scopes Monkey Trial, if you know it, and I got to play the part of a religious bigot. After that, I said to myself, Cripe, you're going to become some California surfer. You're going to end up teaching in California schools. I said, no. 
I joined the US Peace Corps. So we're still a long way from Nigeria, but at least we have a beginning. So I was in the Peace Corps in, uh, in India. Now you have to remember that is the time of the Vietnam War. I declared as a conscientious objector and that's how I ended up in Nigeria as doing my alternative service as a conscientious objector. And that's where I met my wife, Adeline Elizabeth Kripe, and that's simply another story that I'm not going to go into at this time. But that was one of my duties, was to coach, was to coach soccer. And I, I didn't, I mean, I grew up in Tucson. I didn't, there was no soccer in Tucson <laughs> in those days. And, uh, but it was my job. And the best thing is I had great players. And I had players that played barefoot and could put the ball in the air a good 60, good 60 feet, you know. I had, I had players. And when I left, my wife and I left Nigeria, I, I never, we weren't married yet, but I never thought I would ever coach soccer again and arrived in Nogales and these kids came up to me and I said yes. So that's how soccer got started at Nogales High School. I was involved with it as head coach until 1989. And then I began to realize, hey, anybody can coach field players. Find out that the students that you had coached in Nigeria. It it came through a counselor, mm. Larry Larry Zeger, came through a counselor. Him and I uh, would would uh, we had we pulled our trailer down and parked it in the travel trailer park, and he lived in the same area, and uh, you know I rode home with him and spilled the beans, and he told the kids, the rest is history. And what, what caused you to arrive here in Nogales? What was, uh, brought you here? That's a long story. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, by that time, excuse me, I had a master's degree in Oriental Studies. I had taught for three years on the Navajo Reservation. And we left up there so my wife could get her degree and become a teacher. I substituted where I had gone to school at Amphi. But they all remembered this farm kid in Woodshop and all the teachers would have me do wood shop and whatever. They didn't realize, hey, this guy has a master's degree. <laughs> and taught African world history and geography in, in Nigeria, West Africa. Wow. And nobody would hire me. I had out 50 applications. I never can really trace it for sure but I think being a conscientious objector might have had something to do with it. And I interviewed for Nogales. They fired the guy that hired me. <laughs> and uh, I called up, hey, do I have a job? <laughs> yes. So that's how my wife and I, in August 15th, 1977, arrived in Nogales. Wow, wow, to the day, you remember the day. That's oh, wonderful. of course. That's wonderful. Elvis Presley died on that day. Oh, that's why as well. Yeah. And so in the realm of sports in Nogales, um, it's so interesting that being so close to Mexico that you were the first to introduce soccer. Could because you... everybody played American sports. Wow. You it were... was unpatriotic <laughs> to play soccer. <laughs> 
You can imagine all the mucho carrera this gringo oh, got yes. by introducing <laughs> by introducing soccer. You it's, know? it's teasing is the language of love here in Sonora too. So they must have loved you Thank uh, you. as well. So wonderful. And uh, what what else in the realm of sports in Nogales would you like to share with us today? Well, uh, soccer goes on. You see it with the kids. Uh, there were, I mentioned Joseph Contour who passed away, yeah. but there was uh, Kiki Rodriguez and of course uh, Ron Turley. I worked at the, just at the high school level. They are the ones that are responsible for the local level. but. Very interesting league here. The first league that was formed, believe it or not, was called the Rainbow Unicorn Soccer League. <laughs> That's great. And I think George Silva, uh, I think, uh, played in the Rainbow <laughs> Unicorn <laughs> Soccer League. I wonder league. if there's a still uniform out there. Somewhere. Oh, no. I, I, I don't think so. <laughs> that would be great in our museum uh, as an artifact piece. So, wonderful. So what about the academic history here in Nogales? Okay. What, 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 can we, what can we say about, about learning here in Santa Cruz County? Okay. What's the thing that the Supreme Court just turned down today? I'll, I'll turn. Uh, affirmative action they I'll, just turned down. What is yeah. it? Affirmative action. Affirmative. I couldn't get the Fs and the Ts. Affirmative action. Oh. Uh, you have to remember that back in the back in the 60s the Nogales uniforms sorry the Nogales school district did a very good job of bringing in some outside educators um, my mind's slipping here for a second Tom Rochford and his family uh, there was a science teacher, uh, Dan Johnson and his, and his wife. And they, in some ways, they educated the Dr. Marcelino Verona group, uh, Hector Ramirez. And so the, there was an early core that was educating students very well uh, in Nogales. I joined that group in 1977 and I had substituted up in Tucson the whole year. At Amphi, they, I was the bouncer in the library <laughs> and you know, I had had a rough time up there and when I came here, I apologized to the students. I'm sorry, I was, pull, I was full of spit and vinegar back in those days. Maybe I wasn't very nice, I don't know. But uh, I got saddled with some class called World Cultures and Economics. And that lasted for several years. I, uh, the, I mean, we were teaching, we were trying to do things. And uh, then I quit my PhD, just had got to ABD, quit that, and uh, as soon as I quit it, I saw advertisement for Fulbright, teacher exchange to Scotland. Believe it or not, I was thinking of taking my family to Pakistan <laughs> under the ABD stuff. I decided, <laughs> no, cripe, that, that's not good. And so uh, I applied and got a Fulbright to teach geography on a teacher exchange in Scotland. That woke me up. 
I started to see, you know, our, especially our seniors, all these guys and gals were interested in was having a good senior year. That was the most important thing in their life, having a senior year. And then I, I started dealing with students in Scotland. They were doing college work those yeah, yeah. two years. Yeah. It was first year college they were doing. Yeah. I studied a year in Germany. They, yeah, they're way you, advanced. You see, yeah, you, yeah. you see, yeah, you see, and you know, I said, yeah, two different strokes for different folks or whatever, and yeah. I came back, and then, you know, this senior year business—that's a waste, and so I began in. Uh, trying to get my decades all straight here uh, and my centuries. Uh, 1990, a woman came to Nogales Unified School District by the name of Barbara Mathis. And Barbara Mathis, I had encountered international baccalaureate in Scotland, but I didn't really know what it was. But she knew what it was, and she approached me. And would you believe it? I let an American teacher persuade me not to do it. Oh, you'll never, oh, you'll never, they'll never, they'll never, they'll never, they'll never, not never, never, never. So I said, I, I don't want to do it. Then I came back the next day, and I said, cripe, you idiot. That's exactly what you what you want. Uh -huh. So there was there was Mrs. Mathis. Judy Becker joined our group. Neil Krug, Booter Campbell, Booter Campbell was a Amphi High School graduate just like myself. Mr. Arnold Lopez joined it. John Bell, who taught French, he joined it, and myself. I refer to us as the Magnificent Seven, and we encountered more, whatever you wanna politely call it, and we prevailed and International Baccalaureate, as from what I have been told, is still around. Wow. Now, why is that now important? What's that thing that the Supreme Court just did? What was the name Affirmative of that? Affirmative action. Affirmative action. See, some people could, could argue One reason Nogales students were successful was because of affirmative action. But International Baccalaureate began to put a pedigree to that. You had, you had substance. It just wasn't the fact that you were a person of color. And so I would argue 30 years ago, the Magnificent Seven put in a program at Nogales High School that if you wanted to do the work, no matter what your, what your race or whatever, you got the pedigree to do it. Huh. And they can't, they can't, if you got, if, sorry, if you have an international baccalaureate degree, you went through a terrible amount of tests and classes to get that degree. Mm. And so, I mean, people, 
affirmative action, you know, taking it away. But if you got the goods to go with it, they can't take it away from right. you. Right, yeah. It's interesting that you've tied that, though, you know, back to 50 years ago, um, this history-making uh, thing that happened today. But how incredible that, you know, you loving, you rose the level of, of, of you quality beat them, learning. You beat them at their own yeah, game. Yeah, at their own game. I mean, through, we did that. Yeah. It, nobody realizes. We did that 30 years ago in Nogales, Arizona, when we st started getting students to, to, take, to take and pass and achieve an international baccalaureate diploma. That, that, I would say, is very historical uh, as well. You. So thank you for sharing that. And nobody knows to, it. Yeah, nobody knows. Well, now it's and that, will, And so. that and 50 cents won't even buy you a cup of coffee. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another unfortunate twist to history uh, that's happened as well. Um, but uh, to wrap it up, we've got we to gotta, we gotta go on to the, the final and the fun subject. Uh, you know, driving down into Nogales, it's hard not to see butterflies now with that, that new overpass. Oh, the new overpass. Yeah, the Mariposa overpass. Uh, so what can you tell us about the world of butterflies here in Nogales and Santa Cruz County? Well, with the help of the Santa Fe Ranch, uh, we, we started, well, after I retired I took a master gardener class and the professor saw that I was interested in butterflies and uh, started doing something at uh, the Santa Fe Ranch and the person that was my instructor was Dean Fish and Dean Fish had a father by the name of Ron Fish. And at Amphitheater High School, Ron Fish and I have known each other since we were 15. Wow. <laughs> and so I started a butterfly and hummingbird garden there. Uh, Anthony and David are carry, carrying it on. And what we're trying to do is get people to raise plants like blue mist, uh, Arizona milkweed, mm. things like that that attract butterflies. I've got an Arizona milkweed. Beautiful flower yeah. it has, a beautiful flower. Yeah. Maybe someday we'll even get a monarch. Yeah. We got a, that was, this is now, right through here's the migration route too. So very important. Uh, the, Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. Now, the, the flyover. The flyover I always had an interest in, and even before it started, I went and asked somebody, Mariposa Road, are you going to put a butterfly <laughs> in the tank? And they said, yes. And I said, what kind? And they said, well, it won't be a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> the lizard kind. <laughs> okay. <butterfly. laughs> so I, you know, I f saw uh, what I was seeing looked fantastic. The big ones down at the bottom of the flyover, they look like swallowtails. Swallowtails. And up at the top, there's about six or seven hundred little ones that I labeled as skippers. <laughs> and I saw that they that they uh, had painted all of the bottom ones and Dr. Marcelino Verona Jr. got all of the ADOT people to come to a Lions Club meeting and of course old Cripe pops up are you going to paint all those little ones, those <laughs> six, seven hundred little ones? Would you believe they started painting them the next day? <laughs> That's cool. So cool. That's cool. Yeah. But the rest of it <laughs> might not be cool. <laughs> no, well, you got to pipe up again. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine was over 
someplace over there, Wilcox or Safford or Thatcher or someplace. The, the company did a fantastic job. It was Ames, and of course, I connect Ames with Ames, Iowa. Hmm. Anyway, this friend was over there, and he heard somebody complaining. You know, some blankety, blankety, blank in Nogales, Arizona, made me paint all those butterflies. <laughs> you're the, so you're I, the guess I, I guess I'm the, I'm the blankety blank. <laughs> and I guess the community of Nogales owes it to this blankety blank to that the butterflies were painted. Well, you've been a trendsetter in the academic field, the sports field, and now even the butterfly field. So we want to thank you so much, Manfred, for joining us today. And what are those plants to leave people on a good tip uh, to plant uh, for Blue, butterflies? Blue mist. Blue mist. Another name is Eupatorium gregei, but blue mist easier to remember. And uh, uh, Arizona milkweed. Arizona milkweed. But then there's a lot of, you know, lantana, zinnias. zinnias. There's a lot of, a lot of things that that you can grow. But you have to realize butterflies need things for nectar. That's like just a zinnia. Hmm. But then they need the larval, the larval. To, to lay their eggs on. Uh, believe it or not, the city has a fantastic display of passion vine down in the carom garden mm. and that attracts the gulf the gulf fritillary uh -huh. okay yeah, yeah, yeah so there's they're not beautiful like roses uh but something can eat them and and they'll bring live. you color they'll bring you the same color of roses right in insect right, form right so, beautiful well, thank you all very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk about the Nogales that I have lived in for whatever it is, 46 years. Yeah. And well, thank you for giving us a deeper appreciation of where we live. Thank you. Awesome.